If you're building a bat team, Barbara Gordon is an essential. Here's your look at the new DC Collectibles DC Essentials Batgirl action figure. Bring home Batgirl of Burnside in her most poseable figure yet. Decked out in her custom designed by Barbara herself suit, the purple and yellow color scheme has been a favorite of readers and cosplayers alike. Create your own adventures with Batgirl in this 7 inch figure featuring over 20 points of articulation. If it pleases the mob, I'm going to go ahead and take the Measuretron and measure off how tall Batgirl stands. Put it right to the very top of her ears, right there, right, right there. According to the tape measure, you're looking at a figure that's standing 6.4 inches, which I think is about the same height as the other female figures from the DC Essentials line. We'll check on that in a second. And then we'll switch that over to centimeters just before we start this review to tell you that you're also looking at a figure that's about 16 centimeters tall, 16.3 to be exact. Yes, for some scale comparisons, we'll bring in one of the other female figures that we've looked at from the DC Essentials line. And actually, you know, when you look at them side by side, one can't help but notice, oh, maybe not, maybe not. They're about the same height. It, it is throwing me off for the fact that Harlequin's got, of course, her jester hat on. But if you actually look at the figures side by side, line them all up, I think the dimensions are exactly the same to one another. Of course, what's throwing it off is the fact that their boots are a little bit different from one another. The arms look like they are similar in build, similar in scale. Yeah, they do look like they are the same to one another. Uh, obviously, Harley Quinn sports a little bit more extra. That's a nice way of saying it. A little bit extra in the torso, upper torso section. But I guess, if not excluding all that, they are about the same scale of figure to one another. Now, looking at the figure's accessories, the fact that they call this line Essentials would make you obviously believe that this is a, the essential Batgirl. This is the one that you would want to have as the definitive Batgirl. And while her sculpts are good, unfortunately calling this line Essentials from, a, from an accessory standpoint is rather ridiculous because what you do get for essential accessories is a batarang and a pair of hands. Still wish that this could have been uh, a figure that could have come included with a display stand, circular, rectangular, or really any shape that you would have wanted, but something that would have said prestige to it. No, it literally would not have said prestige on it, but it would have screamed prestige. Having essentials written on the top, having the character's name on the front of the placard, something to make you feel like this is a definitive version of Batgirl. Accessories, from that accessory standpoint, I really wouldn't consider her like the definitive Batgirl, even though I do think the head sculpt and really the overall sculpt figure is really good. Let's have a look at the accessories that come included with the figure, and then we'll get a little bit more in depth with Batgirl. She comes included with a pair of gripping hands. You could probably guess where this is going to be leading itself to, a segue perhaps to the other accessory that comes included with the figure. Now, out of packaging, I kept it as default as default could be. She does come with a pair of closed fists. Now, the closed fists aren't going to be, be doing anything, really, in the means of holding the batarang, so this will cause some quick thinking and some split-second decision-making on your part as to how you want to display the figure. Say you want to display the figure with batarang, well, you're going to go ahead and take the hands off, replace the hand to the gripping hand. There we go. And you know, while we're at it, when we visit the next door neighbor as well, we'll pop that hand off too, replace it with the gripping hand, pop that back into place. There we go. Along the way, while you're doing that, you might notice a little bit of paint flaking off into your hand. It's, it's to be expected. Just a little, whole bunch of yellow paint that's kind of been piling up there, just waiting to retreat. And it was just sitting on the end of the sleeve. Even the frequent times that I've been doing this, still got a little bit of that yellow paint flaking off. Okay, okay. So we'll put the figure right there. We'll have a look at her accessory. We'll just dust away the crime scene. And let's have a look at the Batarang, the one and only other accessory that comes included with the figure. Now, I don't know, really, what, what else would one want for accessories? A grapple gun, perhaps? Maybe various different shapes and sizes? of a brat batarang but this is essentially what we get gauging by the thickness of this plastic and having already used this and just kind of played around with it for the first few minutes or so too small to really get in get outside and have enjoyment with this batarang pretending like i'm throwing it but i can tell you though based on the plastic and the thickness of it 
It's not a fragile Batarang. I mean, I would not entertain the idea and encourage the idea of you bending this because it will break. And then you're going to run upstairs or downstairs to wherever your parents are, and you're going to say that this reviewer told you to bend your Batarang. I did not, Mrs. Johnson, I did not tell your son, I did not tell him to bend the Batarang. He chose it upon himself. I'm not responsible for that. Anyways, if you are going to be putting that into her hand, it does require a little bit of pressure, a little bit of patience, and a little bit of force. You're going to take the Batarang and wedge it in between her fingers and her thumb. This is something that will probably cause not frust I suppose some frustrations, maybe some uttering of foul language. Don't utter f foul language, but uh, the Batarang does not sit well in her hand. Just as I think I don't have it, then I successfully get it wedged in her hand. I actually find it wedges better if you flip it the opposite way around. I don't know if this is necessarily the way that I would imagine Batgirl to be throwing the Batarang. I would imagine, if anything, it would be flipped the other way around. And yet I find this is the easiest way, the most effective way, to do the blizzard test and not have the Batarang falling out of her hand. So just keep that in mind. If you do want to put it the other way around, by all means, do it. You can do it as much as you want, but the Batarang is going to sit a little on the looser side. It barely stays in her hand. So I just find it is possible, a little more successful, to turn that frown upside down, mister, and put it the opposite way. Just FYI. Just FYI. All right, so let's have a look at this Batgirl. Now, I have really been waiting for this specific release to be coming out from DC Collectibles because I've always been a big fan of this Batgirl costume. There's something to be said about like that classic purple and yellow color scheme. Kind of reminds me of Yvonne Gregg, I believe her name was, the one that had done successfully so well the Batgirl from the classic Adam West Batman series. Sort of when this costume first came out, I couldn't help but feel like I was looking at the vintage Batgirl costume. Of course, elevated and a little bit more advanced in its design, but sort of the core elements of color still in play. This very nice, vibrant purple kind of looks like something the peculiar purple pie man of Porcupine Pete. Yeah, da -da 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 That's a requirement, by the way. Every time you say his name, you have to say that. Yeah, da -da -da -da. Uh, the coloring is something that he most definitely would be favoring. It kind of looks like the coloring of almost like a Concord grape. Amid, amidst, amidst that, amidst that, it's the panel lining, there you go, of all the, uh, the black panel lining that they put into the costume. Just kind of give it that sense that it has uh, a little bit more of a tactical suit to it. Amidst. Uh, you can see that the, how the figure has come together, some panel lining running down the side of the leg and down to what looks to be almost kind of like a, like an army style boot, just in yellow. The laces are done, but it does look like there's a fair bit of paint that's kind of been overlapped to the front of the laces, kind of causing them to look a little goopy. And unfortunately, a little bit of the yellow has also carried over into the leg. It's a little sad there. But really, the rest of the figure is pretty quite clean. Having a look at her head sculpt, I think the head sculpt is rather quite pretty. It is a vast improvement if you ask me, if you ask me, I don't know if anyone is asking me, but I'm going to weigh this in anyways, versus the Harley Quinn that we had gotten before, a figure I so wanted to like. And still, when I look at it, eh, it's just, it's not working for me. Batgirl, though, it is working for me. The head sculpt is really quite rather nice. Kind of wish that they could have made Harley Quinn a little bit on the more prettier side. But uh, nonetheless, there's the sculpts between the two figures. I don't know, again, I'm not too keen on the fact that she's a very busty looking Harley Quinn. I don't know why I'm finding fault with this, but she really was certainly, most definitely a disappointment to me. And uh, by that point, I was really hoping for a female figure to come along to kind of change my mind for the soured current state I was in for the female DC Essentials figures. I think Batgirl rather does kind of elevate my disappointment with Harley Quinn, giving me a really nice representation of Batgirl, despite disappointments for the fact, of, again, she comes with very little in the way of accessories. She actually is a really decent enough looking figure. Now, from a production standpoint, that's a completely different story. Unfortunately, getting this out of packaging, her double hinged knees, you can already see it right now, is really loose. It's disappointing the fact that when you get a figure immediately out of box, it shouldn't be like this. 
I don't even feel like I've had figures when I was growing up that used to be like this. G.I. Joe's and any other articulated figures getting them immediately out of packaging always had really tight joints. Seems the latter now, when you pick up these figures from stores, it's kind of like a it's a hit or miss battle. Sometimes you may do well, sometimes you may not do well at all. And unfortunately, the culprit and the uh, poor victim in all of this is Batgirl's leg. It's just really, really loose. I can still get the figure to stand. Um, standing is not so much the issue. But again, like there's really not a whole lot keeping the one leg up. I have to keep the leg really, really straight, and I actually find bending the knee for this particular figure to be to be something that works better for the figure, at least for mine, that I'm not going to have to worry about her toppling over. Now, she does have technically peg holes on the undersides of her feet, which I guess in theory you could get a display stand, which sadly she, once again, does not come included with. But still, for the time being, I'm just really disappointed that for all the positive things I can make about this figure, good sculpt, good coloring, everything really vibrant about the figure sort of lets me down in the end by having a really loose knee. Now, that would not be everybody's back girl. I can't imagine it would be every single person's back girl, but it certainly is mine. And I certainly feel compelled to tell you that it's an issue still when you get these things out of packaging, that loose joints perplexing as it may seem, should not be loose out of packaging, and yet there are still cases out there. I haven't had to figure out the packaging very long at all, and you can see how loose it is already. Let's have a look. Let's turn that frown upside down and have a look at this figure's articulation. So her head rotates all the way around. It hinges technically up and down. It's a little stiff, unfortunately, the first time you do it. But the head does move down quite a bit, kind of leaving a bit of an awkward gap between her hair and her cape and the head moves up as well. Now, I don't know how confident I feel moving the head too far up. I don't know if I'm adding some stress to her hair here, but just to show you for the sake of this review, you can move the head up and you can move it down. If it can't do that when you get it out of the packaging, just know you've got a slightly tighter head. You just want to kind of loosen that up a little bit. Uh, the lower torso or upper torso connected to the lower torso is attached via a ball joint. The arms hinge out. You can rotate them all the way around. Has a swivel at the bicep, double hinge on the elbow. A rotation in the, not quite the hand, not quite the wrist I should say, but the hand rotates all the way around. Hinges back and forth. Uh, then we get to the legs. Let's straighten up everything first before we do that. Legs split out. Legs go forward. Legs go back. Legs swivel. There we go at about a three-quarter cut on the thigh, double hinge on the knee, uh, swivel in of all places, kind of like the calf area. It's cut in the way that it swivels, but there we go. This one leg swivels around the calf area. This one leg doesn't move, so I'm just gonna leave it be. And uh, as for the feet, back and forth, and a slight ankle pivot back and forth there as well. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there you go, there's Batgirl. Not a bad looking figure at all. Really, definitely far superior, far superior to the uh, Harley Quinn. Still disappointed by that figure. Far superior from a look, from a construction and from the coloring of the figure. The paint that they use is very vibrant, as you can probably see here in this review. Unfortunately, though, the one, one plaguing problem, and I'm not even talking about the accessories, because I can live with the fact that she only has just a Batarang and interchangeable hands, the biggest problem for me, and it's only really probably for my figure, is the fact that unfortunately she does have loose knees. So I'll have to make sure I keep an eye on her, keep a good eye on her, to make sure that she's not going to fall over if I put her on my display shelf. Now, I've always felt like a costume could make or break a character in comics. What I mean by that is, often at times, creators will go and want to redesign, reimagine the look of the characters. Sometimes successful, sometimes, unfortunately, fails, and they have to go back to the drawing board frantically to redesign something that's a little bit more favorable to the fans. Since issuing this design of Batgirl, I think unanimously, Batgirl fans have fallen in love with this costume, with myself included as well. This is one of my all-time favorite favorite Batgirl costumes, and I'm glad that it still continues to be your costume to this day. And every time there's a new figure, statue, or even collectible, I'm always quick to want to jump on board and get the next one. This one is a nice addition to your existing Essentials line. She's pretty, and she has the very bright, vibrant colors of the purple and the yellow, something made famous to the classic Batgirl in the Batman, uh, Batman Adam West series from the early 60s. Now, this one, as good as it may be, a far cry better than the Harley Quinn that we had to look at previously from this, the same Essentials line. As good as she is, unfortunately, I still have the problem with these figures not having enough accessories. To, again, call these 
essentials, you really would think that they would add more accessories and at the very least add an, a, a display display stand that you could display the figure on top of. The fact that they don't even come with a display stand kind of has me questioning why they call it essentials. At the very least, you would want to think this is like the premier line. So why not display the figures with really cool, unique display stands to one another? Uh, unfortunately, on top of that, as you probably saw in this review, unfortunately, I've also got a loose knee. No, I don't have a loose knee. My knees are fine. They're just old. I just got old knees. But this figure does have one loose knee. It's not enough that it causes the figure to topple over, but I know as history has usually shown us for the Essentials figures, once you get one loose joint, that joint continues to get loose until the point that the figure's legs will just give way and buckle on her. I hope that's not going to be the case because I really do like this figure quite a bit. And whereas the Harley Quinn let me down, this one brought me way back up. If you guys want to pick up this one for yourself, some good news is the Essentials Batgirl is available now in your local comic book stores. Pick her up. Let me know what you think of her. If you have already picked her up, let me know down in the comments section what you guys think of the figure. And also let me know if you have had any problems with loose legs. I'm sure it's only just me, but I want to just put the, the question out there to the mob. Let me know if you guys have had any of the same similar issues with legs as I have with this particular figure. If you guys want, also want to go back and have a look at some of my other DC Essentials figures re reviews up to this point, there's a playlist just for that. And if you are new to this channel and haven't done so already, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. More videos like this, maybe not quite like this, but you know what I mean. More videos will be coming soon, so stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.